Bioplastic. You've read about it, you've heard about it, and you've probably eaten hot dogs off disposable plates made out of it. Now listen to Frederick Shear, CEO of Seraplast, tell you why it's going to be the next big thing. We make bioplastic resin, and the resin is made from different feedstock, primarily from starch. The concept is that we are making two different kind of resin, two family of resin. The first one are called the compostables, and the compostable resin are basically made for quick application, fast application, such as packaging, food service wear, and things of this nature. The drinking straw, the kind of drinking straw you find, you find at, at Starbucks. And the second family of resin are called the hybrid resin. They are, they are targeting the, the durable applications, such as automotive parts, such as consumer electronics, and so, toys, and so on. Look at this one. This is made of compostables. This is made of an hybrid, hybrid resin. Hybrid, re hybrid resin are basically called biopropylene. And biopropylene is a recyclable polypropylene in which you have 50% starch content. It's used by that company called CSI Cosmo which is making cosmetics a jar. The beauty of both family of resin is that it is not made of oil and therefore we are reducing our dependency on oil. Hey, but let me see the feel on that, right? It is, uh, it's almost sandier. It's yes, slightly sandier. It's not that it's, slick. It's, it's absolutely, it's not cold like a okay. traditional plastic. When people are buying a, a resin, the resin will run and be processed on traditional equipment at temperature which is going to be about 50% lower than traditional temperature. Oh really? So it's so not only again, the raw material yeah. but then the... Uh, Abs uh, absolutely the process. So it's a very neat thing and we have to realize also something which is the magnitude of the plastic industry is such that it does represent in the United States 10% of the entire amount of, of um, oil being used and in Europe about 35%. So it's quite significant. Really? Yeah. This for, in, this, for instance, is look like a typical credit card. It's made from our product. Really? A, a which which resin is it? The, uh... This is a compostable resin okay. in which we use something called PLA, polylactic acid, mm. which is made by a company called NatureWorks. I think that it's important for people to realize that between the biodegradable, the very first generation of biodegradables that you had in the, in the early 80s and today, I mean, really, we have made tremendous amount of progress. Do you still deal with skepticism? Because there was that move to... To be very honest with you, less and less. Okay. I mean, clearly, uh, we still have some people that are asking questions. They don't understand, the, they don't understand exactly the term biodegradable mm -hmm. so, and compostable, so we need to explain them. But I think that there is much much more awareness now. I want to show you this, which I think is interesting, because very often people have this wrong idea that, in fact, a um, product made from biodegradable and compostable resin will not resist to coffee well. Look right, at heat, right. <laughs> you know, they think it'll melt. I guarantee you that you put your coffee inside, you will have absolutely no problem. The, and the beauty of it, it's recyclable, yeah. and the touch is different, so people are quite interested in those kind of products, because clearly, it is something which is much better. You know, clearly, you have application, you have industries that have no interest in, in composting, and, and where product will never be composted, such as automotive industry. Right. You don't you don't drive your your car in a compost site, not not in a lifetime. But here, with the polypropylene, mm -hmm. basically, you offer some things that clearly. Um, has a much better carbon footprint. This is another one, it's made by another company called uh, Innoware, and you find mm -hmm. that at um, the Cheesecake Factory. Oh. Uh, 